Okay, in a moment we're going to show you a video uh, about an incident that occurred on July 9th. Following the video, Chief Davis is going to come out and provide additional information about the event and then take some questions. Okay? On Saturday, July 9th, a group of three to four juveniles entered the IHOP at 6655 Arlington Boulevard in the Falls Church area of Fairfax County. One of the juveniles threatened the hostess, while another lifted his shirt, revealing what appeared to be a handgun in his waistband. The group departed, but returned around 11 p.m., attempting to get the employee to come outside into the parking lot. When officers arrived, the juveniles ran to a nearby parking lot, where officers detained two of the juveniles and did not find a weapon. While detaining them, a third juvenile, believed to be involved in the brandishing event, approached officers. Due to the nature of a weapon brandishing call and not yet having located a weapon, officers ordered the third juvenile to the ground at gunpoint. Officers determined the juvenile was holding his cell phone and filming. Yeah, four hundred alpha four five Charlie four ten alpha four eleven Charlie South area four one hospital weapon in progress six six five five Arlington Boulevard at the IHOP caller stating that there are about ten mils outside in reference to a weapon that was flashed earlier about three hours ago has not seen one tonight nothing was discharged was concealed caller is now saying that they are surrounding the windows from outside of the building, so it's something to get further. Car 40 Alpha, you direct. 40 Alpha, I'm direct. 23 Alpha. 400 Alpha. 400 Alpha. Can we ask to see if the gun, the gun is back there? Direct, so much. Uh, units en route to the weapons complaint. According to the caller, the subject is currently at the emergency exit and sees the subject from earlier holding a gun. I know if it's pointing at them directly. Four o'clock, Charlie. Can we get a subject description, please? The gentleman is attempting to get further at this time. Attention on using channels going to be restricted. Subject's going to be a 16 year old Hispanic male with a large nose, mustache, shoulder lift, black curly hair, wearing gray jean pants. Four hundred alpha. I got three running northbound Toyota. Sir. Where they go, Lucy? Yeah, right there in the red. The green behind you. One on the on the sidewalk. Stop him! Just put him in cuffs. 400 out, but it looks like there were still a few people over at IHOP and still other units that can go over there. We're good over here at Toyota. Direct any unit on the scene, we're fine back to the IHOP. 411, Charlie, repeat your traffic on the main channel. 411, I'm heading back to the IHOP. Direct. 3 Charlie on 4. Good. Yeah, I'm on scene of the fucking complaint. We have 3 detained right now. We can have somebody fly by the IHOP. Direct, we have units on the 420 off, I'll move 411 Charlie. Direct. 440 Charlie, I'm with him too.
Right floor. with you, right with you. Floor. I'm not a black guy that ran. No one ran, sir. Stop moving your hands, right? Hey, check me. I don't Hey, look. Stop him. Go. Please, please, let, let me talk. Hey, put the phone down. Put the phone down, man. Get on the ground. Get on the ground now. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Lay on the ground. For what? You guys have a reason? You guys have a reason to do this? What? What's the reason? We have two. We're missing one. I think we're missing one. One still reason? outstanding. I believe so. Lufik had, Lufik had them. They got one right there, one here, one there. So we have three. So that's all three. I believe so. We got one there, one here, one there. Uh, check him for weapons first. Yeah. We'll get your phone, man. Good search. Good search. We haven't yet. We're getting there. All right. Who's got the gun? What gun? Who's got the gun? What gun? Someone got a gun. You don't have a gun. Someone's got a gun. Why do you think I'm here like this? Who's got the gun? No one has a gun, bro. Okay. <laughs> Let's just throw them in my car for now. You guys can search me every time, bro. We got no gun. You got anything on you? No, nothing. All right, I'm going to do a better pat down. Just make sure you don't got any weapons, okay? Right, Spread your feet for me. Where's he going? Someone else's house. What's this in your pocket here? Oh, uh, my punch that I dropped. Are you mind if I go in there and get it? I can. Go. There's some in the back for now. Yep, some in the back. You want not? Uh, that door should be. You are now. Thank you. Just have a seat, man. Butt first, butt first, butt first. There we go. We got three. What's your name, boss? What's your birthday? Tattoos, man. Yeah. Hmm? Where? On this forearm? Yeah. He's saying he's got a tattoo on his forearm. He does? Yeah. Okay. He says it's. Look, man. Alright, I'm gonna level with you, okay? 
we got called because they said somebody was having a, had a gun was threatening people with it at the IHOP across the street. All right, the officer saw three of you guys run from that IHOP. That's why we're having the response that we are. All right, we got some some serious things going on. Okay. The three juveniles were detained and later released to their parents. The investigation has been assigned to a detective in our criminal investigation division. As with all point of a firearm events, this incident is under review. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for uh, being here on a, on a Friday afternoon. When this video went viral last weekend, um, we all knew, FCPD leadership knew that our community would expect a response from me and from our leadership team. Uh, we're here five or six days later because we wanted to get it right. We can get it fast and not get it right, or, or we can get it right. So we've taken the last several days to gather information, to conduct the beginnings of an administrative investigation, the beginnings of a, of a criminal investigation. Both those things are going on right now. But now we have enough information that we want to share this with our community. Uh, this format is the same format that we've been using for the last year when we talk about uh, and when we have follow-up press conferences following an officer-involved shooting. So this is the same format. Um, a viral video that lacks context can make its way around the world twice while the truth is putting its shoes on. Um, most of you probably remember the, the legendary broadcaster Paul Harvey. Uh, Paul Harvey had a segment of his show called The Rest of the Story. And Paul Harvey would start off that rest of the story segment by saying, hello, Americans, I'm Paul Harvey. You know what the news is. In a minute, you're going to hear the rest of the story. I think this video speaks for itself. I'm certainly willing to answer any questions you may have about it. I want to pull up a couple statements. We have a very compelling 911 caller. Uh, we're not playing the 911 caller audio because we wanted to protect. We want to protect the identity of our 911 caller. But I'm going to read you, if it's up, some ex excerpts, direct co uh, quotes from our 911 caller. There are three guys that came into my job, and they um, came in here and showed me a gun. Right now, they are texting me like I'm going to shoot you. Oh, my God, they just said come outside. Again, this is our 911 caller. Next slide. Can you come, please? They are coming inside. Please, they are coming inside. Please, please, please. I think they are shooting. Someone is screaming. And finally, from our 911 caller, and these are just excerpts, she stayed on the line with our, with our 911 call taker who was transmitting this information to our dispatcher, and our dispatcher was broadcasting and transmitting this information to our police officers who were dispatched to this gun call, this in-progress call for a, a crowd that included a, a person possibly armed with a gun. So finally, our 911 caller says, I'm really scared. They are walking around the whole IHOP. They are right now at the emergency exit. I can see them holding a gun. So as this 911 caller is taking this information, he is transmitting it to a dispatcher who's sharing it with several police officers who are being dispatched to this IHOP restaurant. The IHOP restaurant at about 11.02 p.m. still has a few customers and a few employees. Um, there, was a, there was a hostess. There were waitresses. Um, not too long ago, my, I just think of, you know, you always think of your own children sometimes to compare and contrast. And my, my daughter was a, worked at a restaurant not too long ago, and I was worried, worried about this happening to her. And if it did happen to her, she knew to call 911. And the folks inside the IHOP knew to call 911. Our call taker, our dispatcher, our res responding police officers were faced with, a, with information on their way to an in-progress call for service, in-progress 911 call, 
And when they got there, and if we could put the map up, when they got there, they saw three people run across the street from the IHOP to a closed car dealership. The IHOP is depicted in blue and the closed car dealership is depicted in red. So as our three police officers arrived on the scene of this call, they see three young men. And those young men were described by our 911 caller. Our police officers had those descriptions. The people who were fleeing this IHOP to the car dealership across the street were the same people described to our 911 call taker uh, by the caller, the same folks. They weren't out walking, they weren't out exercising, they ran from the IHOP. Our police officers did what we expect them to do as an agency. Um, they followed them, they pursued them. They stopped two, you'll see, well one, you saw rather, one was stopped, one in the rear, the three of them were kind of in a row. One was stopped in the rear, one was stopped in the front, and the person in the middle wasn't stopped right away. The person in the middle who ended up being the person who took out his cell phone kind of circled back and then took out his cell phone and then the officers approached him at gunpoint and they ordered him to the ground. I think you also saw in the video how our police officers took the time, and this is very important to me and to our leadership team and to our community, they took the time to, to describe to this man uh, why we did what we did. Um, you saw that at the end of the video when the police officer opened up the call, car door. So pointing a gun at someone in 2022 in America, a police officer pointing a firearm, firearm at someone is very serious, very serious. Uh, but if you just go by this viral video that kind of popped last weekend, I think there's an assumption that this person was a passerby. -er. He was not a passerby. -er. Um, there, there's an assumption maybe that, that this person had nothing to do with the gun call. Uh, he did. He did. He ran with that group from the IHOP across the street to the car dealership when we eventually stopped him. We did not recover a firearm. Uh, you saw in the in this uh, presentation that we were out there, or we, got, we weren't out there rather, but this incident kind of started at 9.12 p.m. And we weren't called at 9.12 p.m., but what we know at 9.12 p.m. is a group of young men arrived at the IHOP, went into the IHOP, had a uh, encounter with an, I'm sorry, an employee at the IHOP. Later that employee during the 1102 911 call describes what she saw during that 9.12 p.m. encounter. And she describes a firearm. I don't know why she didn't call at 9.12. She's probably scared. Um, but she did, she did call less than two hours later at 11.02 p.m. And that 911 call for service was one made with great emotion. And she was scared. And she saw a gun. And she was threatened. And she called the Fairfax County Police Department. And we responded. Um, we've been capturing as a police department, and not every police department in the country does this, um, but we've been capturing since 2018 the number of times a Fairfax County police, police officer points his or her firearm at a person. And when we point a firearm at a person in Fairfax County, that generates a review of that police officer's actions each and every time because it's that serious. We know the impact of having a gun pointed at you. It's serious, we take it seriously. It's something that our profession hasn't always taken seriously. Um, I knew for the first couple plus decades of my career, firearm pointings by police officers weren't even memorialized in a report. And now they are, now they are. And beyond being memorialized in a report, now that they're investigated to see if it's appropriate. Was it necessary? Is it consistent with our training? Is it consistent with our community's expectations? It's a various thing to point a firearm at a person. So I understand the anxiety that folks in the community have after seeing this video go viral. Um, I shared those concerns just like our community when I saw it last weekend. Same emotions, same concerns, same questions. And we've taken the last several days to get to the bottom of it. 
while we're still gathering additional statements, looking for additional witnesses, looking for additional evidence, we know enough to now speak intelligently and accurately, and again, the key word, with great context to our community and describe what happened last week. We want you to be concerned when you see a, a video like that that goes viral that appears to, to demonstrate that the police department wasn't doing the right thing. And that generates, that generates what, what happened here. We looked into it. We, we're, we're still in the process of investigating it. Thank God for body cameras. Thank God for cameras at, at commercial establishments. Uh, those cameras, cameras help us get to the bottom of things a lot faster now than they, than they used to. But I want to reiterate the seriousness of, of any firearm pointing in our community. Um, we take it seriously. Um, our whole community takes it seriously. Our Board of Supervisors takes it seriously. We talk about it all the time. All the time. We just partnered with a, with a, a university, University of Texas at San Antonio, um, and, and went over an entire use of force review and look and took a very deep dive into the number of times Fairfax County police officers point their firearms at people. And, and we mold and we gauge our police training around these events because we want to continue to get better and better and better. These police officers who responded to this scene acted lawfully, acted in accordance with their training and our policies, and in my opinion, our community's expectations. And we hope that this explanation of sorts uh, serves to assuage some of the concerns that I realize exist in the community following this incident, particularly when a video goes viral and it goes viral without context. I'll take any questions. Scott. Um, the NAACP made a statement and asked for some additional video for other incidents, but in their statement they said, they're deeply concerned by what appears to be a shift to a more aggressive style of policing. You just mentioned you've been collecting data. Uh, is there any numbers that indicate uh, pointing firearms, uh, actually discharging firearms by police is up, down? Uh, it, yeah. Is your policing more aggressive at this time? No, our, our policing is professional and it's consistent with community expectations. Uh, this police department out of America's 18,000, I'll put in the top 1% in the country when it comes to how we train our police officers. It's best practices. It's 21st century policing standards. Right now, Scott, uh, for the first time, we've introduced ICAT use of force training, the gold perf standard. We're in the midst of able peer training, active bystandership by law enforcement. That's going on right now. Uh, we recently held a community use of force day to inform and educate our community about what uh, what goes behind uh, the science and the education and, and how we train our police officers regarding use of force. The Fairfax County Police Department for the last decade has averaged about 1.5 officer-involved shootings a year. Last year in 2021, we had one officer-involved shooting. So far in 2022, we have four. Uh, that's up from our average. Our average, again, is 1.5. We're a county of 1.3 million folks, uh, bigger than several states in the United States of America, and we've always enjoyed a very low number of police-involved shootings. So the fact that we're at four versus our average of 1.5 or versus one last year, it's not indicative in any way, shape, or form of any stylistic or philosophical or vision uh, change in policing. Uh, we police very progressively. We're victim-centric. We have also, in the last year, uh, begun phase one of our co-responder program. So we're doing a lot of things in 2022 that are on, the, are on the progressive edge of policing that we weren't doing in 2021, and we're doing them in 2022. The, the, uh, but the pointing of firearms uh, issue, you said you tracked since 2018. Do you have any data that indicates that's up, down, or? I don't have pointing data in front of me, Scott, but we're glad to capture that and share it. And, and the last thing, just the NAACP's concerns, they would like to see the video release expedited of these yeah. other two incidents. Absolutely. Uh, is there a reason you weren't able to bring those out today? Well, Scott, um, in the last year as well, and I think I said ICAT's new in 2022. Abel's new in 2022. Co-responder is new in 2022. If anything, we are we are policing 
more thoughtfully, more progressively than we ever have. Uh, what else is new, starting in late 2021, is our release of information policy. We never had one. Never had one. Okay, now we have one. And our policy, and it's best in, best in practice, requires us to release all officer-involved shooting body-worn camera video within 30 days of the incident. That's never been our policy before, it's our policy now. So the officer-involved shooting at the Springfield Town Center occurred on June 30th. We'll release that and have a follow-up press conference within 30 days. We just will. Our McLean officer-involved shooting occurred on July 7th. We'll release that body-worn camera footage uh, through a, a press conference within 30 days. Um, the, the, there's, there's no hesitation. In fact, to the contrary, there's a commitment for us to be transparent, a commitment for us to share. And there's a great deal of emotion that goes into any community when you have two officer-involved shootings in a relatively short amount of time. Uh, we share that emotion as a police department. Uh, we're looking at our, our training, what needs to be enhanced. Uh, do we need to do even more when it comes to responding to 911 calls for service that involves someone who's in behavioral uh, or mental health crisis? So that's why we're, we're all in on the co-responder program. And if you recall, Scott, on July the 7th, our, our first 911 response to the McLean residents was a co-responder response. Um, our, our clinician wasn't with us the second time we responded, but, but he was on the, on the first time. So I'm proud of the progressive nature of this police department. Uh, we're early adopters when it comes to use of force enhancements. We're early adopters when it comes to training, education. There is no shift in vision, no shift in philosophy. Uh, in fact, there's a commitment to get even better, and we've demonstrated that. Amari. Thank you. Um, was there any indication whether the individuals knew who the hostess at the IHOP was? So that, that piece of the criminal invest investigation is, is underway, and I'll say this, there's an indication that at least one employee inside the IHOP, Omari, uh, was familiar with these folks, at least some of them who were there both at 9.12 p.m. and at 11.02 p.m. So yes. Darcy. Yeah, um, going back to the original video, was the viral video. Um, I mean, I, I'm looking at this just like everybody else. I mean, it, did the officer initially think that the phone was a gun? I mean, can you explain what was going on in that moment to respond that way to someone holding a cell phone? Yeah, so, uh, so I, I, I'm glad you asked that question, Darcy. So the officers were dispatched to an in-progress 911 call for a group where one or more of the persons in the group may be armed with a firearm. They get to the IHOP, three run across the street, okay? That tells any police officer in America that those three, by minimally by preponderance and reasonable suspicion, are associated with that call for service. So our police officers did the right thing, right? They acted, and they followed, and they attempted to detain. They got two of the three right off the bat, and when the third person circled back around, and he was holding that cell phone in his hand, and the uh, police officer, the first one you see, uh, orders him to drop the gun, and then I think she changes some of her language, or the other officer does, that speaks to the fact that it's a cell phone and not a gun. Um, I, I don't know what was running through her head, um, but she's responding to a 911 call for a person or persons with a gun, so that's just something that, that she said. Um, you know, we're really, and, and I probably should have started off by saying this, we're, we're really fortunate that no one inside the IHOP, patron, employee, uh, no one involved, um, the young men involved, and no police officers or other passerbyers or citizens or community members was, were hurt. Uh, we're really fortunate that this didn't end with anybody hurt or worse. So, so I, I don't know why she used drop the gun versus drop the cell phone. Uh, but she was at a heightened state of alert, alertness. And I think enough people in this room, at least on the media side, have been through enough of these scenario-based trainings, whether you've covered it or participated in it. Um, adrenaline is running high when you're dispatched to a, a 911 gun call. Um, that's my, my only thought at the moment. But again, these investigations are still ongoing. 
Um, so the investigations, we know enough to be able to intelligently and accurately speak to things that aren't going to change. So everything I'm telling you today, uh, these are facts that I'm relaying to you that, that are not going to change. There are more details associated with this investigation that need to be uncovered before we're able to speak to them. But as far as that, that piece of it, just a quick follow-up. So I think one could understand if he were holding a gun, that kind of response, drop it and yelling and all that. But, you know, a lot of people out in the community, including us, report police sure. doing things. I mean, thank goodness people are out there reporting things. So it, it would make sense to me, logically, that someone did think that was a gun, given that response. And we have seen in the past... Sadly, that phones do get mistaken for being guns and they're tragic outcomes. Thank goodness there wasn't. But, right. you know, personally, when I look at it, I, I, I'm wondering what was, what was going on there. If there really right. was a thought right. that the officers were in danger of being shot, you know, yeah. in that moment with whatever was in the officer's hand. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, Darcy, you've been doing this for, for a long time and uh, you, you, you've covered many of these incidents over the years. And um, again, thankfully, no one was hurt but you know the officers and, and they're and they're all veteran officers when when they're responding to that 911 gun call and it's at the ihop and they're getting information that describes folks who were involved they're getting information from the dispatcher who's getting information from the call taker who's getting information from the 911 caller that they're outside right now and they're trying to get in and, and one has a gun and, and you know i'm not going to bore you and reread verbatim what our 911 caller was taking off telling us, but that's compelling, compelling, right? So when they get there and they see these young men running from the IHOP to this closed car dealership, they're not folks out taking an 11 o'clock stroll with their dog. They're, they're not passerbyers. And one of my concerns, of course, of course, was the, the, the recording of police officers in public spaces is First Amendment protected, period. Period. I mean, I think we have that tattooed on our forearms by now. Period. So I had the same initial response that I think our community did. Was this a passerby who was uninvolved in a police incident who's simply trying to record a police encounter and exercising his or her First Amendment privilege? And and it's not. And it wasn't. So. I just had a quick follow-up. And then Scott. Okay. Not, nothing hard. Um, the teens, can you say how old they are and are they facing any charges at this point? Uh, no, yeah, so, so, so th they're all teens and no one's facing any charges. We're still conducting a, a criminal investigation. We did not recover a firearm uh, that night. Um, can you say there's we searched. ages? Or? I, if, I knew, if they were in front of me, I would, but I don't have them in front of me. they charge or will they face charges or? Well, the criminal investigation surrounds the brandishing and the firearm possession. Um, we don't have probable cause at this point in time um, to establish that would, would lead to that arrest. So we'd rather conduct an investigation and do it thoroughly and professionally. Um, there's no arrest. Uh, there's not an arrest necessarily imminent, but our detectives are conducting an, an investigation. And our Internal Affairs Bureau, and I hope I mentioned this earlier, they're conducting an administrative investigation to uh, ensure that our police officers acted in accordance with, our, with the law, our policies, and our communities expectations. Dave? Yeah, um, just to, uh, Dart, you, you essentially have touched on this, but can you just talk a little bit about you know, the, the presence of the gun, the nature of the threats, the fact that you had only had two in custody and there was uh, one that you were still looking for, the, the, the nature of the call. I mean, if there, was, if there had been no gun uh, brandishing as part of the 911 call, uh, would, would the officers have taken the same sort of uh, tact in your mind, I guess. Hey, Dave, this, this was a priority response to a 911 gun call, right? So I don't want to go down the hypothetical rabbit hole, but if this weren't a 911 gun call and it was a call for service for disorderly persons or for a uh, customer dispute, uh, we, would have been, we would not have responded in a priority mode. Um, it wasn't that. I wish it were. Uh, 911 gun calls are, are very serious calls for service. And you don't have to look and go back too far this summer and you see police departments who are being criticized for, and rightfully so, for not acting when lives are threatened. Not acting. So we acted. And I, based on my review and understanding of the investigation at this point in time and my 
a thorough review of all these videos, uh, our police officers acted in accordance with the law, accordance with our policy, and consistent with community expectations. Listen, I know when you watch this and you see a police officer pointing a gun at another person, that makes all of us kind of, kind of, you know, cringe a little bit. Like, uh, uh, you know, I wonder what's going. That's normal. If it didn't make us cringe to see a police officer pointing a firearm at someone, then something would probably be wrong with us. So the community needs to hear it. I cringe like you cringe. But after I'm done cringing, we investigate, we uncover facts, and, 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 and we act with uh, um, professionally to, to address the situation. Thank you. Scott, one more. Uh, Darcy got to an important point, and I want to try to achieve clarity uh, because it, it is in the details. The female officer originally apparently is reacting what she thinks may be a gun. Uh, the, the officer's gun is still drawn. It changes to cell phone. According to police training in this department, is that because the individual was still presumed to be possibly in possession of a firearm and that would justify holding him under deadly force? Is that accurate? Have I got that right? Because they hadn't patted him down yet. Right. But I, now the second officer holding the weapon can see it's a cell phone. Uh, but his posture remains under the yeah. deadly force. I, I think once the, the person... Uh, who we were pointing our firearms at uh, complied with their their orders to to get on the ground, which is consistent with our training. You see, you saw the officer's holster, um, and again. But they were demanding that because they believed it was possible he had a firearm. And they well, Scott, I'll be. I'll, I'll, let me back off. Uh, let me back up a step. The officers are responding to a nine one one gun call. The nine one one caller is telling our dispatchers, and they're telling us what the folks who may be in possession of the gun look like and where they are. So when we get there, those very folks, those very folks run from us. So while we were detaining two, a third person um, comes into their purview. So, and that third person, uh, the officers knew, or at least suspected very strongly, was involved in that flight from the I have to the car dealership parking lot. And therefore was a potential suspect for being armed. Is that accurate? Yes, because okay. the officers had yet to recover a firearm. So okay. I think they were in the midst of a of a pat down. They had not yet recovered a firearm. Here's the third person. They knew that person was involved in the call for service. That person was not a passerby. Uh, and and they detained that person. And they started that detention with gun, at gunpoint. I'm belaboring the point because you said in your comments <sighs> This is a community would have expected this response. It was justified so far, et cetera. So the reason the gun remained out and under threat of deadly force on the individual was it, the officers had good reason to believe the individual could have been armed. And therefore, a absolutely. And therefore the threat right. of deadly force was right. justified. Is that accurate? That's accurate. And I don't think community expectations are inconsistent with one another. I think the community expects us to act when there's uh, danger afoot, particularly gun crime danger. The community expects us to act. Uh, they also expect us to act professionally, and if circumstances were different, absolutely the community expects us not to engage a passer, uninvolved passerby or um, recording the police in a manner uh, at gunpoint. And, and that's something we train religiously, and it's a, it's a point of uh, conversation routinely on the police department. Amar. Has the waitress or anyone else who was working at the, at the IHOP that evening been in communication with Fairfax Police since the incident? So, Amari, I'll say that um, all of our detectives uh, have, uh, have already spoken to several people. Um, I, I'm not going to say who they have spoken to, but they've spoken to several people already. And if anyone was present at the IHOP or outside the IHOP or in the parking lot of the closed car dealership has any information they'd like to uh, share with us, then we're, we're more than willing to sit down with those folks and, and hear what they have to say. But we've, we've interviewed Amari several people so far. Um, and, and if there are more, we're certainly interested in interviewing them. And just a follow-up to that, um, Chairman McKay of the Board of Supervisors mentioned that uh, the board will be monitoring the investigation. Have they been in contact with Fairfax? since the incident? Well, there's a process, and it's a, it's a great process. So we have a citizens review panel um, that ultimately has a level of involvement. We have a uh, police auditor.
that has a level of involvement. So there are several layers and several checks and balances that, that exist in Fairfax County uh, that frankly don't exist in too many places. So we have several layers of review in place. Uh, this will be uh, thoroughly reviewed. And uh, I, I don't expect anything less than that. And I don't think the chairman or the board of supervisors expects anything less than a thorough review. I also don't think it's inconsistent to share with the community like we're doing now, context. So this is a context conversation. Uh, I, know it went, I know what went viral last weekend. I saw it too. Uh, but there's more to the story. And, and that's what this is all about. We're sharing context so, uh, so folks can have a, a bigger picture on what happened last weekend. And to follow up, Scott, you know, it's just going to be a matter of a few days before we have follow up press conferences for our two officer involved shootings. Thank you, Chief. Thank you all.